Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Tiffany Sampson and I work for an trader in our Denver office. Today we have a very special event for you with Chris Lawson from Lizard Indicators. I'd like to mention that it is important to understand that there are substantial risks in trading commodity future contracts and Forex. You should carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you and will depend on your specific circumstances and financial resources. It is possible to lose all funds deposited with your broker and could even incur losses beyond these amounts. Please inquire at the link provided for more information or for a copy of the CFTC Full Risk Disclosure. Also, please remember that these training webinars are not solicitation nor recommendation, but rather educational in nature. This presentation is presented by NinjaTrader LLC, which is the technology company responsible for developing and supporting the NinjaTrader trading software. Brokers related questions should be directed to NinjaTrader at the information provided below. With the new tools added nearly every day, NinjaTrader ecosystem is home to hundreds of apps and services. You can quick, quickly and easily find the tools or services you're looking for with a simple keyword search. You'll also find information about upcoming webinars and add-ons, video archives to view event recordings. Also, if you're active on social media, please ensure to like or follow us for all the best ways to get updates on all things in Trader ecosystem. We are very excited for this unique event in which Chris will reveal how to identify the VWAP value area in various time frames. Thanks again for your attendance today, and without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome to New Trader Webinar Room, Chris. Please take it away, Chris. Hello from uh, Berlin, uh, Germany, everyone. I hope uh, you guys can hear me. If you can just give me a little sign in the chat box here, so that I know that you, you hear me all right. All right, super, great. So that's me to the uh, left here, Chris Lassen, and then we have Harry, also known as Fat Tails, our market lizard, to the right. As I said, we're based in Berlin, Germany. It seems like we're either in winter or summer mode over here. Just coming off from Easter holidays here, and uh, we're right into summer mode with uh, 20 degrees Celsius and up. So that's, uh, that's nice. I like that. Um, yeah, for uh, the uh, webinar today, I have a 30-minute slot, so I won't uh, spend too much time on introducing ourselves. I guess uh, many of you are already familiar with uh, Harry's uh, indicators. Um, many of you probably already have one or several installed on your computer. He's programmed some of the most downloaded indicators for NinjaTrader 7 and NinjaTrader 8. As for myself, I previously ran a company that focused on sentiment analysis, applying concepts from behavioral finance, and looking at how emotions and psychology influence investment decisions. And to start off here today, I'll just do a quick uh, overview of what we offer. First, uh, we have the Indicator Spotlight newsletter that you can subscribe to completely free of charge. About once a month, we uh, talk a little bit about one of our library indicators with information on a general concept from technical analysis, how to use it in a trading scenario, along with a free download to the indicator itself. So if you're just starting out, the indicator library is a place where you can find and explore a wide range of techniques for technical analysis. There are some uh, 130 indicators available in there now. So even if you're an experienced trader, chances are that you'll find some pretty useful tools in there. And then we also have our premium suite. That includes our professional session tools, as well as our flagship indicators for entry timing. So today I'll focus on one of our most uh, popular session tools, the BVAP package, and how you can use that in multiple time frames. Uh, basically, it defines price action zones where institutional investors are interested in participating in the market. And uh, we will look at how to use that uh, to identify momentum and early trend retracement setups. 
We'll also have a look at uh, how to define your risk, so your stop loss, and uh, then discuss how the overnight range can help us define some profit targets. So there are two main reasons uh, why institutional traders use the VWAP. Uh, it's a benchmark uh, used to control exec execution costs. So for one, institutional traders, they don't, they don't want to move the markets, of course, when they uh, enter large positions. So they have to find an area where the majority of uh, the day or the week or the month's transactions will occur. And statistically, 70% of all transactions uh, during the session will take place within one standard deviation of uh, the VWAP. So that is uh, referred to as fair value. And uh, institutional traders are looking to execute as close as possible uh, to this uh, area where they'll find uh, plenty of supply and demand. So in addition to that, the uh, VWAP is also a factor in performance reviews. So execution or good execution can be objectively measured by standard deviations from the VWAP. So that means uh, better execution then the BVAP uh, will earn you a higher bonus, which of course is a, a motivation for many institutional traders. So this is uh, what the daily VWAP looks like. By default, uh, it's anchored at the full session start of the day, and uh, it then plots the volume weighted arithmetical mean of all transactions that uh, take place during the daily session and prices uh, for each transaction is uh, uh, added uh, during the day and then divided by the total contracts traded during that time. Uh, this is a somewhat atypical VWAP chart. It's uh, the NASDAQ in a five minute uh, chart at the start of the week, so Monday. And I've chosen this particular session to discuss uh, a higher time frame VWAP uh, later on, so stay tuned for that. Um, our daily VWAP can also be anchored at the start of the regular session, which is what you see here. We've zoomed in a little bit from the previous uh, screenshot. Um, but you can also choose a custom uh, starting point, uh, say at the uh, start of the pre-session, for example. And so this uh, fair value that I uh, mentioned um, are prices that are within one standard deviation of uh, the VWAP. Uh, and so because institutional traders are looking to execute within that area, we can use this information to identify setups that are likely to see some uh, traction. So the idea here is to look for retracements back to the VWAP value area going from uh, inside value towards the outer standard deviation bands for directional trades. And once prices move towards the outer standard deviation bands, institutional traders are likely to take a step back and we're likely to see rebalancing. So these are obviously overbought uh, scenarios and can then be used as exit points for these uh, directional trades here. A um, little bit later on in the presentation today, I will uh, have a look at uh, how to determine uh, this value area and uh, overbought and oversold uh, for the uh, higher time frames as well. Here we're back to the uh, daily VWAP anchored at the default uh, full session start. Uh, we moved to a 15 minute chart to uh, show the prior day VWAP value area low and high. As you see, these are the upper and lower first standard deviation bands of the previous session here. So some of the best uh, setups are found when uh, prices move out of this uh, previous value area. So following the regular open here, we saw the market uh, move out of this uh, value area high. And those are the types of scenarios we'll look at today. Um, but also, um, if the market uh, trades out of the prior day value area, the value area low here, 
and uh, fails to follow through, that might be a good momentum opportunity once it's clear here that the uh, trend is, is changing. Um, so we'll have a look at that as well. Uh, but as a general rule here, we have a long bias above value area high and a short bias uh, below value area low. Our daily VWAP uh, also plots the VWAP level set uh, two and three days ago. Uh, these previous VWAP levels are important key support and resistance levels, so it's a good idea to be aware of uh, where they're located. Uh, here we see that the uh, pre-session uh, ended um, in a test of support of the VWAP level of three uh, days ago here. And uh, then, as I said, shot through the current day VWAP and the prior day VWAP here, testing this uh, VWAP level from two days ago and uh, the value area high before the uh, move continued. So coming back to the institutional perspective, uh, some of these uh, large positions will, of course, take uh, days to fill. And so it's easy to imagine uh, how these prior VWAP levels can be used as opportunities to get in or out of trades. And just to make it uh, clear where these uh, previous uh, VWAP levels originate from, uh, you see here it's simply plotting uh, where the VWAP stopped calculating at the end of the prior sessions. So the yesterday's VWAP uh, comes from this area. The VWAP from two days ago goes back here. And the VWAP from three days ago uh, goes back to uh, back three, three sessions. So just to, to make it clear where uh, those, those levels originate from. Next, we'll have a look at uh, how to define the, um, trend setups using uh, one of our tools for entry timing, uh, the zero lag oscillator together with the VWAP. Uh, the zero lag oscillator was uh, developed to identify momentum and early trend retracements, identifying setups um, when there's a trend change or a short term overbought or oversold. So what we see here is the uh, zero lag oscillator in a five minute uh, NASDAQ chart together with the uh, daily VWAP. And uh, for momentum setups, we're looking for a uh, decisive cross around the zero line, uh, taking out the uh, high here of the previous uh, consolidation zone. Um, so it's uh, looking at a consolidation zone look back and needs to set a new high in this example. Uh, but the range of uh, this bar is also examined. So it needs to have a certain range in order to qualify as a momentum signal. It's not uh, enough just to limp across the, uh, the zero line here. It needs to have uh, some punch to it. Um, and again, as you see here, this is a situation where the market had broken through the value area low and then turns around and uh, takes off in the uh, opposite direction. So next we see some uh, white bars here uh, cutting into the new trend. Uh, this is uh, to show us a short-term oversold in the new trend and indicates a uh, potential retracement setup. And uh, once uh, the buyers are taking advantage of these uh, short-term lower prices, we get a key retracement signal. So the K here is for key retracement. Uh, that is the first retracement into a new trend. Uh, later on, we see a secondary retracement signal. Uh, that those are marked as uh, Rs to distinguish them from the first retracement into a new trend. And um, uh, the stop losses for uh, these positions are generally set uh, below the low of the setup bar or the signal bar. So here we have uh, the setup bar here, and then we have uh, the signal bar here. Um, here the stop was set um, below 
the key support resistance level yesterday's uh, VWAP. And so you can, you can use these uh, price levels in conjunction with uh, the uh, lows set for the uh, long um, signals here as well. As for the momentum signals, uh, the stop loss can either be set uh, right below uh, the signal bar or um, at the low of uh, the last consolidation area. Just keep in mind that will um, mean more, more risk on the position, obviously. Okay, so here is a short scenario from the uh, overnight uh, session, uh, just to show you how this looks uh, in a short scenario. The histogram is moving um, below the zero line here but the bar here that's breaking uh, out of this consolidation area is far too wide. So uh, that's the second requirement of the momentum um, range bars. They, they can't be a uh, crazy range like this because uh, usually you always get a immediate retracement on, on bars like that. So that's uh, not a type of momentum that you want to enter in. And uh, so for this uh, key retracement, uh, we see these uh, yellow bars showing up here. Uh, those signal a short-term overbought. And then once uh, sellers are coming back to the table here confirming uh, this, uh, this move, uh, we get a key retracement signal. Uh, later on, there is also a secondary uh, retracement signal here. Um, this is a failed signal, um, but as you can see, both of these uh, occur within the uh, prior day value area. So I'd prefer to take a signal like this, which is uh, outside uh, the prior uh, value area low. However, we see that this one is also outside the current uh, VWAP value area. Uh, so this scenario that shows up here is preferable for the long scenario that I looked at previously. So you have a break above prior value, but you're within this uh, current uh, day VWAP value. Uh, as for the stops for the uh, uh, short positions, it's uh, above uh, the high of the setup bar or the signal bar, whichever is the highest. And again, you see here um, this uh, key resistance level is helping out to uh, uh, to set a, a reasonable stop level for this one. All right, so now we'll uh, have a look at uh, identifying targets. I like to uh, have a look at the overnight range because uh, it is the most uh, recent uh, high and low levels. Most uh, major future markets are traded around the clock. Uh, obviously, and uh, the high and the low of the night session and uh, uh, the pre-session will set the uh, tone for much of the collective reasoning and uh, psychology in the markets. So the price levels from the Asian and uh, European sessions will often work as uh, important support resistance levels during the US regular session and uh, you should uh, therefore be able to access uh, these price points uh, on your charts. Uh, the expansion bands um, of this range also work as reliable profit targets. And coming up here, we'll uh, have a look at a few examples of uh, how this uh, plays out. So this is the same example again, uh, NASDAQ futures, five minutes from uh, Monday. The uh, overnight was set uh, right at the opening of the evening session and uh, the low occurred just before the regular open. Uh, this is also a fairly representative image of what often goes on in global markets where the Asians and the Europeans will uh, trade the market in one direction and then the local US traders wake up and go to work and say, hey, hold on a minute. Yesterday's uh, regular high and close levels were up here. So let's go back to those price levels uh, that we're familiar with and then we'll uh, take it from, from there. So in this situation, we had a uh, secondary retracement uh, set up following a break of uh, the prior VWAP value high. See this uh, key retracement was just uh, below 
the value area high, so I haven't bro broken out of this um, prior value. And so the uh, first logical target here um, would be the prior regular high for a uh, risk reward ratio of about one to one and uh, trading a two lot. Uh, the second target would then be the pre-session high or the second standard deviation uh, band here of the current uh, VBAP. Now this particular chart doesn't give us a lot of opportunity to uh, look at the extension band, so uh, let's just have a quick look at another example where those come into play. This is a 15-minute chart of the uh, Euro Futures uh, contract from Tuesday. So what we see here is a breakout from the pre-session low just after the regular open. And we have a uh, 50, 100, and 200 uh, percent extensions. You can, of course, choose these uh, uh, levels uh, to your own liking via the indicator dialog box. Uh, the 50 percent expansion equals uh, half of the overnight range here. And 100 uh, percent equals uh, double this range and 200 percent two times the overnight range. So here we're back to a uh, five-minute chart uh, with the zero lag oscillator and the VWAP added to the chart. And uh, after the uh, regular open here, we see a retracement signal plotting just as price action is breaking out of the uh, prior uh, value area low. Um, and we also see that uh, prices move from inside this uh, value area here. So moving from uh, inside to what's the outer standard deviation bands. Uh, of course, in this scenario, we're already pretty much sitting at uh, the uh, uh, overnight low, so you can't really use that as a target. Also, we see here that the VWAP bands are quite uh, contracted because of the narrow overnight range. Uh, so prices uh, move outside uh, the outer standard deviation bands fairly quickly. And it's uh, exactly in situations like that that the uh, overnight expansion bands come uh, into play because uh, they give us a clear measure of uh, uh, how far the move might go uh, based on this objective benchmark here. It's just the overnight range, so the expansion here. In this case, went to 200% uh, and a little bit beyond. All right, so uh, to round off uh, here today, we'll uh, have a look at uh, the higher time frame VWAPs, specifically the weekly and monthly VWAPs, along with the rolling VWAP. So the session start for these uh, calculations is uh, the start of the week or the start of the month. And therefore, um, when they start out, they would be uh, pretty much the same as a, uh, a, a daily VWAP on the first day of each, each uh, monthly and, uh, and weekly calculation. So uh, to create a uh, uh, better reading for those days at the outset of the month or at the outset of the week, uh, we've created uh, rolling VWAPs uh, that will enable you to uh, create continually weekly uh, and monthly VWAP calculations. So this here is uh, the NASDAQ in a 30-minute chart with uh, the last week's uh, uh, VWAP here and uh, Monday's uh, reading here. You see they're both anchored at the beginning of the week. And what we saw here was uh, the overnight dipping, dipping in uh, just below the uh, prior week VWAP, which ended up here, and then shot back up outside the value area high. And coincidentally, this is exactly what happened here uh, last Monday too, a quick dip um, below last week's uh, VWAP level and then a breakout from this value area high that continued uh, throughout the week. As you see here, we also have um, mid-standard deviation bands. 
So we have the 0 0.5, the 1.5, and the 2.5 standard deviation bands here. And uh, throughout the weekly session, we often see that uh, these levels work as dynamic support resistance levels. Um, they're particularly useful for these larger time frame uh, VWAPs because um, the regular standard deviation bands uh, end up quite far apart from one another. And so you see here this uh, 0 0.5 lower standard deviation working as support resistance here at the upper 0 0.5 and 1.5 here. And um, overall, I think we see here how the weekly VWAP reading uh, can help us uh, determine the overall trend, uh, the value area, and uh, overbought here. And um, of course, uh, the issue with this is uh, the outset of the week. You'll have to wait at least two days for this in order to be uh, different from a daily VWAP. And, um, that's where the rolling VWAP comes in. Uh, this is a five-day rolling VWAP. Uh, we can create a moving weekly calculation. Uh, it's not anchored at the beginning of the week session, but it's taking data from the previous session, moving it forwards. And uh, you'll therefore have an accurate reading at the outset of the week. And uh, here we've combined the value from the traditional weekly VWAP calculation uh, along with this rolling um, uh, weekly VWAP, and you see here uh, some uh, institutional bonus making here on uh, getting better execution than the uh, rolling uh, weekly VWAP here as well as here. Um, and so I think using these two conventional and the rolling VWAP together gives us a little bit more context to, uh, to what's going on. Same goes for the uh, monthly VWAP. Uh, this is the NASDAQ in a four-hour chart. So now anchored at the start of the month. And we see that uh, the month started above the prior month value area high and has continued in a upwards trend, oscillating here between the uh, upper 0 0.5 and the upper second standard deviation here throughout the month. So combining these uh, higher time frames with a shorter time frame is a uh, pretty powerful way to uh, uh, identify a trend, um, value overbought and oversold, and of course, ultimately, setups. But again, uh, the conventional monthly VWAP here uh, for the first five days uh, will be the same as the weekly VWAP and uh, so if you're using this traditional weekly VWAP, uh, you will have to wait a little bit in, in the second week of the month in order to be able to use it as a benchmark. Um, and an alternative to that can be the rolling VWAP using 21 days. Um, again, not anchored at the beginning of the month, but taking data from the previous session and moving it forwards so that we can have a monthly reading here at the outset uh, of the month. So this is pretty much my uh, last uh, slide of the presentation. It's a pretty funny one. This, this channel here is just incredibly consistent. Uh, the uh, 1.5 upper standard deviation and the, the second standard deviation, it's uh, working like clockwork here. Uh, so. Uh, that is what I had for the uh, main chunk of the presentation. So if it's uh, all right with everyone, I will now transition into the uh, webinar bundle that we've uh, prepared for today. Uh, includes uh, basically what we talked about here today, the VWAP package, uh, the serial lag oscillator, and the uh, opening range multi-time frame version. And uh, yeah, we looked at the daily, weekly, monthly, and the rolling uh, VWAPs. You can also create uh, quarterly and yearly VWAPs calculation uh, with this package here. Also, if you're trading instruments that do not have 
reliable volume info, so cryptocurrencies or Forex. Uh, you can use the range weighted average uh, price for approximating uh, the volume weighted average price. Uh, the zero lag oscillator also has uh, a few additional features that I didn't get around to present here in detail. Efficiency ratio, uh, trend filter, uh, divergence, momentum fall off, supply demand filters uh, to customize signals. There's also a video on that on my YouTube channel, so you can swing by and check that out after the presentation if you're interested in some more depth information on it. As for the opening range here, of course, it also plots the regular opening range. Um, yeah, it adds a, basically it adds a secondary bar series to the chart, which is uh, then used to calculate the opening range. Um, so we'll display correct opening range even if the primary bar series does not contain the necessary information for the calculation. So particularly relevant for volume and tick charts and for minute charts. Uh, for example, if you're using three-minute charts on a 10-minute uh, opening range, it will also uh, show you the correct opening range. All right, and uh, we'll also uh, throw in a bonus here today, uh, our indicator library membership. It says 125-plus indicators. I think it's around 130 indicators in there by now. Um, yeah, as I mentioned uh, earlier, it's a uh, pretty valuable resource to fine-tune your trading toolbox with uh, many categories, so trailing stops, trend analysis, statistical indicators, volatility, you name it. Um, and as a member, of course, you also receive regular updates with uh, information on the updated versions and new additions to the library collection. All right, so uh, this is uh, everything <laughs> black on black on white. Um, I also include here for the first uh, five registrants a, a free consulting session. So list price for this is uh, nine hundred and sixty dollars, uh, and the event special goes for six ninety five. So pretty good discount here today. Um, just mention again the. Consulting session is available for the first five registrants here today, just to let you know, as they do go out pretty quickly. All right, so this is uh, where you go to register for the promo, lizardindicators.com forward slash bundle offer. I'll see if I can manage to drop this in in the chat here as well, if that works. And uh, yeah, we'll have this uh, offer up uh, until the end of the week. And uh, I think that's pretty much what I had for today. Uh, we'll uh, open up for q and I hope I'm on time, reasonably on time at least. See, I'm a little bit over time it looks like, but uh, we have some time for, for questions here as well. So let me see uh, if I can scroll up here to see if we have some, some questions. Uh, will this be in the archives? Uh, yes, I think uh, MinuteTrader will send out a recording of this. So uh, there's a question here. 70% um, of transactions occur within one standard deviation. We as day traders, should we avoid this zone and trade only when price gets out of one standard deviation? Your recommendation, please. So for uh, directional uh, setups, I would uh, like to be within one standard deviation of the current day VWAP. Uh, but as discussed in the presentation, um, it's uh, really a heads up to a trending market when you've moved out of the prior uh, day value as well. So uh, the sweet spot is kind of like in the current day VWAP, but outside uh, the 
uh, prior value area. So it's a kind of like a uh, bias filter. So if you're moving above a prior day value area high, it's a, it's a long bias. And if you're below prior day value area low, then it's a short bias. And you would take then directional trades uh, coming from within the current day value area. And then uh, look for exits uh, towards the second standard deviations. Uh, alternatively, use the uh, uh, overnight range, uh, range expansions for target definition. Um, you can, of course, also do uh, outside in trades, which would go then from the outer standard deviations back into value, so outside in trades. Uh, those are riskier, um, but as you saw in one example here, uh, can be done if there's a strong case to be made for a uh, changing momentum. Alternatively, you can use uh, reversal patterns for that, um, but should uh, be supported by um, additional key and support resistance levels. Uh, and then there's a question about uh, the VWAP as a separate indicator uh, that you offer. Uh, well, there is actually a uh, number of uh, indicators in the VWAP package. Uh, so um, and we have the daily, the weekly, and the monthly, and the end monthly. And then you have uh, the rolling, of course, that you can customize to your own liking. So you can have a one-day rolling VWAP as well if you want to work with that, or a five-day or a 21. Um, that one you can customize. And then, as I mentioned, we also have a range-weighted average price indicators for uh, instruments that may not have accurate volume information. So those also come in daily, um, weekly, monthly, and monthly, and rolling versions. Um, Which indicator is displaying the value area high and the prior day's VWAP? That is uh, also the VWAP, so it's just taking the, the same information that was uh, plotted in previous sessions. And I just saw I got a, a five-minute warning here, <laughs> so I, I think I should uh, start to think about uh, wrapping up here. What time zone are you in? Well, uh, we're in Berlin. Germany, so uh, that would put me in uh, Central European time. So we have uh, just before uh, 11 here, We're rolling into midnight pretty soon. So I should probably start thinking about going going to bed. Um, yeah, I think with that, I'm going to wrap up uh, the presentation here. Thanks everyone for checking in. I hope it's uh, been of value to you and. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you sometime soon. You can get in touch with me via the contact form over at uh, Lizard Indicators. Otherwise, uh, also at info at lizardindicators.com. Thanks again for checking in and uh, hope to talk to you soon. Take care and bye-bye. I'd like to give a special thank you to Chris of Lizard Indicators for a great presentation. Everyone in attendance here today will receive an on-demand recording of today's event. Please keep an eye out for that email. The Trader Ecosystem is pleased to sponsor these weekly vendor events as a value-added service for our clients. If you find value in these events, we hope you will attend them on a regular basis. We would like, you to remind you, or we would like to remind you the information provided in this was that of Lizard Indicators and not of Ninja Traders. All information was for educational purposes and should not be strewed as trading advice. Again, we appreciate the time you spend with us. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you in future webinars. Happy trading from all of us at the Trader Ecosystem.